Hello, konnichiwa, and welcome to Watts Weekly Features. Today's guest is Ayumi Takai from the Japan Foundation. We'll be talking a little, we'll be taking a little virtual walkthrough of the amazing resources that they have available and talking a little bit about the events that are upcoming through the organization. I'm Sia, and I will be your host. Watts Toronto operates on land that is the territory of the Huron Wendat and Peytoon First Nations, the Seneca, and the Mississaugas of the New Credit First Nation. This territory is the subject of the Dish with One Spoon Wampum Belt Covenant, which is an agreement between the Haudenosaunee Confederacy and the Confederacy of the Anishinaabek and Allied Nations to care for and share the resources around the Great Lakes in peace. We encourage you to educate yourself about the land that you live on, wherever you're tuning in from. Without further ado, I introduce to you my wonderful guest for the day, Ayumi Takai. Ayumi-san, how are you? Genki desu ka? Hi, genki desu. Thank you. <laughs> So today you folks have prepared us an amazing walkthrough of the space itself, as well as all of the online resources that um, anyone who's interested in Japanese language or culture can find um, just yes. with a click away. So I think, shall we get started by watching that and then having a brief discussion? Yeah, a little bit of a briefing about the uh, the video that, you know, the, the office is, has been here for over 30, 31 years, and we welcomed a lot of people who are interested in Japanese culture. However, still a lot of people don't know who we are and what we do and maybe where we are. So I thought that this is a great opportunity for us to create some presentation video. And uh, yeah, this is the, the launch of the video for the World on the Street, so we're very excited. Um, yeah, and uh, I asked my colleagues to um, cooperate with us, and then each program officer um, takes turn to talk about their department and services and programs that they offer. And in the beginning, also our director will give an uh, overview of the center. So I hope you enjoy this video. Very exciting. Let's have a look. Hang on a second. Just grab it. I'm having a moment of trouble. There's always a moment of trouble. But here we are. <laughs> Hello everyone and welcome! My name is Yukoshi Mizu and I'm the Executive Director of the Japan Foundation Toronto. Before we hear from our program officers, I would like to first briefly introduce our center, who we are and what we do. The Japan Foundation is an institution with a mandate to promote cultural exchange between Japan and other countries. Our mission is to cultivate friendship and ties between Japan and the world. Our headquarters is located in Tokyo, and we have offices in 24 countries around the globe. Our programs cover three main areas, which are arts and culture, Japanese language education, and Japanese studies and intellectual exchange. Our Toronto office was founded in 1990, and we moved to this current location at Young and Glor in 2015. Here, we host exhibitions year-round, and hold various events such as le lectures, film screenings, Japanese language classes, as well as teachers' training workshops. We also house a public lending library. Since the start of the pandemic, most of our activities have shifted online. I hope you will have a chance to attend our online events, as well as visit us and experience Japanese culture in person in the near future. Now, our program officers from each department will explain more about our activities in this virtual presentation. Let's start with our library. We are a public lending library, and here you will find books, magazines, newspapers, manga, CDs, DVDs, and Blu-rays of Japanese fiction and non-fiction films in English, Japanese, and some French. Our library collection is for anyone interested in Japan, from those with little to almost no knowledge about Japan, and to those who already have a good understanding about Japan. We see a lot of people come in here thinking this is a library for Japanese people, but our goal is to help people in Canada learn more about Japan, so you will find that more than 60% of the collection is in English. The topics and subject areas we generally cover are arts, culture, history, cooking, travel, language studies, religion, literature, and more. 
You can browse for and borrow these materials, or you can also use our reading and studying space and AV stations. To borrow from the library, you would need to get a library card. Anyone who is interested in Japan, 14 years of age and older, and live in Canada for at least three months can sign up. We are currently closed, but you can still sign up for a digital library card to access our overdrives, ebooks, audiobooks, and some streaming videos. Throughout the year, our library hosts multiple events and workshops as a way for people to get a chance to get engaged with Japanese culture. For instance, we host author talks, storytellings, and book club meetings. Once we are open again, we hope to resume our seasonal and cultural events and activities in the library. Now, let me show you our library's web pages so that you can find the information you are looking for. First, go to our homepage, jftor.org. At the top, you will see our center's news and announcements and information about upcoming events. The library information is under this tab. If you click on library, you will see the latest news and announcements from the library. If you are curious about our collection, you can visit our library catalog. Here, you can search for titles and authors you're looking for, or type in some keywords or if you're interested in the area. If you have trouble using the catalog or have any library-related questions, you can book a video chat with the library staff from here. To access our OverDrive collection from the online catalog, click this box. We launched it just this spring and we are adding more titles in the coming months, so stay tuned. You can also find us on the Libby app. Let's go back to the library webpage and show you what other resources are available. Under the library tab, you can find book lists and books and movie reviews that we publish on occasion, which we hope will help you decide what to borrow once we are open again. Other library pages include periodicals that we subscribe to. We have about 23 titles of magazines and 18 academic journals. New arrivals, which haven't been updated since we are closed, but normally it's updated monthly. And lastly, here you can find our past events. In the summer, we have a summer festival event with origami workshop, storytelling, Japanese summer dress up, and games. Another popular annual event of ours is the New Year's greeting card making workshop. You can also see here our booth at the Ward on the Street in the past years as well. Well, that's all from the library. Next, from our Japanese language program officer. The Japan Foundation Toronto's Japanese language department offers a variety of support and programming for both learners and teachers of the Japanese language. This includes Japanese language classes for learners, professional development for Japanese language teachers, and other programs including several grants for educational institutions that offer Japanese language programming as well as cooperating in running the internationally recognized Japanese language proficiency test here in Canada. For learners looking for a Japanese language class, we offer online group language courses for everyone from complete beginners to intermediate learners. Our courses are based on the Japan Foundation's own textbook series, Marugoto Japanese Language and Culture, which helps learners develop the skills they need to effectively communicate in Japanese. All courses run from September to July, and over three terms cover an entire level of the textbooks. We also have two streams available. Our weekly Marugoto courses meet once a week for two and a half hours, and our teacher support courses provide students with materials they can self-study, and then meet once a month to practice and review what they have learned. If you are just looking to supplement your own learning, the Japan Foundation also has a variety of free online Japanese learning resources that you can check out on our website at any time. There are several websites that cover the same contents as our Japanese language courses, such as Minato and Marugoto Plus, as well as apps for learning the Japanese alphabets, websites with videos to help you learn Japanese, and even a website to study the language used in Japanese anime and manga. 
While I've mostly focused on programming for Japanese language learners, I invite Japanese language teachers to check out our website to see the various professional development workshops conducted by the Japan Foundation Toronto, as well as the various free online resources we have listed. Eligible educational institutions with Japanese language programs are also welcome to apply to our local grant program, which supports purchasing Japanese language materials, running Japanese language programs, and more. That's all from the Japanese language department. Next, from our Arts and Cultural Exchange Program Officer. My name is Philbert, and I'm one of the Program Officers in the Arts and Culture Department. The work done by our department can be categorized into self-produced projects and subsidized projects. This means that we program and produce our own events while also providing resources to other organizations in the form of grants and partnerships. Although our office is based in Toronto, we support third-party projects that are held across Canada. In the realm of visual arts, we have collaborated with the most prominent museums and art galleries across Canada in the production of large-scale exhibitions to introduce Japanese artists and their works. Similarly, we partner with talented performing artists to produce our own Japan Foundation Performing Arts events, but we also provide funding to those who need a bit of support to fully realize their artistic visions on stage. In the realm of film, we produce film screenings both in person and online, our in-person screenings are often held at our event space, but we also work with theaters across the Greater Toronto Area to give people access to Japan's exceptional cinematic history. There are many film festivals in Canada that show Japanese films, both short and feature length, and we are keen to co-present with many of them by providing grants and financial support to help alleviate some of the costs. This applies to festivals of any size, from the largest festivals to some of the newer ones that need a bit more help. Film and performing arts come together in our Cinema Kabuki series, where we screen world-class live kabuki productions directly from Japan that are captured with state-of-the-art equipment to provide a unique cinematic theater hybrid experience. Last but not least, we have also held our own exhibitions at the Japan Foundation. These exhibitions cover a wide range of themes and topics from Japan's fertile history. From ancient architecture to modern design, ukiyo-e to contemporary prints, ceramics to fabrics, photography, watercolor paintings, statues, dolls, ikebana flower arrangements, and tea ceremony utensils. Every arts and culture event held by the Japan Foundation Toronto is not possible without the help of our wonderful community of volunteers. That's all from arts and culture. Next, from our Japanese Studies and Intellectual Exchange Program Officer. Hello, my name is Novi Nakamura, Program Officer in the Japanese Studies and Intellectual Exchange Department, or JSIE. JSIE programs aim to encourage a greater understanding of Japan by supporting and promoting Japanese studies in Canada. Japanese studies is a scholarly study of, of Japanese culture, history, literature, art, music, science, as well as Japanese language. With the shift online, this has enabled more ways you can enjoy engaging with JSI programming year-round. I'm going to share with you some recent highlights. So year-round, we organize free talks, lectures, and discussions by scholars, experts in various fields for interested people like you so that you can gain a deeper understanding of Japanese culture and Japanese studies. We look at literature, science, look at culinary, culinary science and its connection with film, and more recently a literary exchange with three critically acclaimed award-winning authors from Canada and from Japan. These were all available to watch on our YouTube channel, which you can take a look at a lot of our lectures and content there. There's also talks about architecture and more recently about translation of manga. Japan Foundation also partners with many institutions and organizations and universities across the country to strengthen Japanese studies in Canada and its networks. We support international conferences, projects, workshops, and other platforms that facilitate dialogue across organizational and cultural boundaries. Japan Foundation also has a fellowship program that provides Japanese studies scholars with opportunities to conduct research in Japan. Since its founding over 40 years ago, Japan Foundation has supported numerous scholars, including many in Canada, who have gone on to achieve great success in their respective fields. We celebrated this milestone through this Fellows Gallery, which you can explore here. If you want to find out more about JSIE, you can find many useful resources in our links section here on our website. 
And that's all from JSIE. And this is the end of the Japan Foundation Toronto presentation. Thank you very much for watching. <laughs> so cool. Did you like it? Good. I loved it. I, as somebody who uh, has been uh, has been studying Japanese since I was a teenager, it is really exciting to know that there is such a wealth of resources right nearby. Um, mm -hmm. With, I mean, this library behind you is just stacked. It's so beautiful. It's so you know tempting. Yeah. Um, one thing that really struck me as well was that there are certain books there and certain uh, materials that are also in French, uh, which mm -hmm. I thought was kind of interesting because, um, I don't know, oftentimes uh, French can be left out when it comes to, to Canada's official languages and, and cultural exchanges. So I think a Japanese to French exchange is also really neat. Yes. So I have a couple questions. Okay. Um, first of all, I want to know about how you got involved with the Japan Foundation. I want to know uh, why you came to this organization. And then I'd love to hear about like a nice memory that you have working with the organization, because it seems like a lovely place to, to spend time. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. It's actually a long story, but I'll make it short. Um, 2009, I was walking on Blue Street and I saw the Japan Foundation's sign and I wow, like Japan Culture Center. So I walked in and they were looking for volunteer positions. So I applied mm -hmm. and I started helping Galilee and evening events. And uh, I, then I got hired as a part-time library counter clerk. So I worked part-time for a few years and then I was also doing another job. But in 2017, the chief librarian who actually started this library um, came to happily retire after 22 years. So I mm -hmm. came in to fill the position and since then I'm here. So exciting. I remember you saying that it's uh it's 31, 32. It's it's as old as Watts is actually. Yeah, last year we celebrated <laughs> the 30th anniversary. Yeah, mm. yeah, yeah. So we're we're age mates. That's cool. Yeah. <laughs> so uh tell me tell me one nice memory that you have of working with the Japan Foundation. I'd love to hear something that you're either very proud of or something you were really excited to to bring to the center or anything like that. <sighs> I get very excited when I um, have a chance to meet to um, Japanese famous writers ah. uh, during uh, in the fall time working with Satifa, the Toronto International Festival of Authors. Mm -hmm. We invite uh, Japanese writers from Japan. So yeah, for me, it's their celebrity. So that's that's the best part of my job, I think. That's really cool. And I know also that uh, in the video, they mentioned that there was a Japan Canada literary exchange mm -hmm. um, that had some of- And did you see Margaret Atwood? I did see that there. Yeah, I did. I couldn't help but notice. Um, yes. So just to double check, um, those videos were recorded, am I right? We can, uh, interested audiences can go and take a look at them on your YouTube channel? I, I believe it's already taken off, but okay. maybe there is a way to find it. <laughs> there yeah. will have to be yeah. another one. Check our YouTube channel, yes. There will have to be another one. So um, you mentioned that you began life at the Japan Foundation as a volunteer. So I wanted to know if there is someone out there who wants to also get involved with the foundation, either as a volunteer or writing some of those media reviews or anything like that. How can they get in contact? How can they help? Yes, especially when we are open uh, for the in-person events, we can't... Um, operate without volunteers. So we always uh, um, uh, welcome volunteer applications. Uh, if you go to our website, there is an application form that you can download and uh, instructions for the application. So um, yes, we definitely would like to hear from uh, people who are interested in volunteering at the Spa Foundation. Uh, also, yes, in our library page, you saw that we post some book reviews and movie reviews and mm -hmm. uh, mostly written by our staff members. But um, if you're interested to submit any you know, reviews, we welcome that. So um, please email uh, to the Japan Foundation or the library directly, and we can post it on our website. Run, don't walk, everybody. Go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Speaking of in-person events, um, I know that the, the online library is, is so beautiful and is, is filling up every day with more and more titles and there's lots of streaming that's going on. But I also just want to know if there's any plans on the horizon for an opening 
in person yes. to the space. And if there's any plans for interesting in-person events that we can start marking our calendars for, anything like that. Yeah, we are very um, desperate to open this library <laughs> gallery space because a lot of people enjoy ebooks and audiobooks, but at the same time, they miss paper print books, the physical materials, and walking into the space and enjoy the you know atmosphere. Mm -hmm. So yes, we are really hoping to open, hopefully, before the summer ends. Okay. Hopefully. So yeah, I hope a lot of um, more and more people will get vaccinated so we can get through this. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Uh, yeah, but no set date um, announced yet. But if we have a set date, then it will be posted on our website. So yeah, if you can keep checking our website or um, there is a newsletter that's mm -hmm. sent out every week. And the link to sign up for the newsletter is actually on the Warden Street website right now. So yes, I um, encourage you to sign up for the newsletter to check the updates and upcoming events. That way the updates come to you. You yeah. need to go looking for them. Right. Do you have, is, are there any plans that you can tell me about, even if they're you know just daydreaming right now of things that, uh, that your staff and you would love to be able to program in the space once you are able to reopen? Are there any ideas? Um, yeah, hopefully we can open the library and the gallery space. So we um, have year-round year exhibitions. Also, probably the language class and workshop will be held online still. But um, other than that, if the indoor gathering is allowed, then hopefully we can do some film screenings or lecture events. And yeah, we miss those in-person events very much. Hopefully mm -hmm. soon we can I do running yeah. back up to Toronto to come and put my butt in a seat and watch a film with you. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Amazing. Well, Ayumi, it's been such a wonder talking to you and watching your colleagues show us through the space. Thank you mm -hmm. so much. Thank you so much for this Arigatou episode. Arigatou gozaimashita. Arigatou gozaimashita. This is, and good luck for the reopening. I have my, I'm sending good luck to you all. Yes. Oh, should, uh, can I mention about the survey? Sure, yeah. yeah. So after watching this video, please participate in a survey. Uh, it's very quick and uh, it will help us um, uh, improve our programming. So um, please do. And then the select five people will win uh, a, a gift bag of uh, Japan Foundation goods. Uh, when we say when we say goods, what kind of goods are we talking about? <laughs> like stationery and some cute goods. Ooh. Yeah. <laughs> So yeah, please participate in the survey. It won't take too long. It's only like one, two minutes. Yeah, two minutes max and you want your swag bag, everybody. So yes. now that you've seen the video, go take a look at the survey, grab some goodies from the Japan Foundation and mark late summer on your calendars for a return, hopefully to in-person. Yes. <laughs> Thank you so much, Ayumi. Thank you. And thank you everyone at home for tuning in with us. This has been today's Watts Weekly feature. To explore all of the amazing resources that we have heard about today, you can visit jftor.org. Tune in Thursday, July 1st, for a talk about identity plays with Jivesh Parasram. For discounts and deals, you can check out toronto.thewordonthestreet.ca slash weekly hyphen features. And from all of us at Watts, happy Multiculturalism Week. <laughs>